and 90. So between 8,800 and 9,000 RPM. The, that is freaking high. So coming from racing in like trucks and ARCA and stuff, you're shifting at low 8,000, high 7,000. The shift points when it comes to Xfinity, and I remember this racing Xfinity la last year too when I got in there and, and I was talking with my engineers and everything, and I was like, hey, so where's our shift points at? Yeah, it's a short window. Thank you for saying that. That is a very short window. Um, and that's just like, you know, had, had, had a person not been blocked and, and not not been like thrown to the side or, or you know, black him shouty, black him shouty. And I'm sorry for mocking you right now, but I'm just saying, you know, had somebody not been put to the side and, and, and maybe I would have actually got to see this or actually get to hear this. I mean, this is literally the first time that I'm hearing this and, and having any, like, like seeing any of it, knowing any of it, hearing what you're saying, any of that. So that's what I'm saying. Like, had, had I known that she was actually, or, or had I, been able to, to watch your stream here, then maybe I'd have known this or, or heard, heard what you had to say about it. But let's continue. So, knowing that, that's the only information I, I got pretty much going into there for my shift points. Um, you don't use a clutch shifting, down shifting, or up shifting. Uh, you just lift. Time of perfect speed, lift, pull it into gear, lift, push it into third, lift, pull it back into fourth. Okay, and of course you know that I have I have to have something to say about this. And your particular driving style, I'm not sitting here saying that 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 you don't you don't do this or you don't do that. But what I'm trying to say is is how do you know for a fact that every single driver does it this exact way and none of them do it any different? And the whole point I'm going to try to make here is, is I'm not talking about like super speedway racing. I'm not talking about, you know, even intermediate tracks. I'm talking about like road course racing. Okay. And it even applies to coming onto pit road at top speed, you know, coming off, off pit road or coming into pit road, you know, 180 mile an hour, whatever, whatever you're running. When you're going down, like when you're coming down into the pits or if you're at a road course, there, there is a certain, you know, there's certain instincts where you, where you may have to actually, you know, match RPMs and, and, and get, when, when you're trying to get the car to slow down as much as you can, you're not only using the brakes, but you're also using the clutch, I mean, using the transmission. So the, the transmission is, you know, an important asset when it comes to, to slowing the car down. So if you're matching RPMs, it's kind of hard to match an RPM when you're not using the clutch but it, you know it's also like it's it's really hard to to comprehend what like what you're trying to say your driving style specifically it you, you may you may hit the brake and then you may you know it may slow down a little bit and then you may shift but when you're trying to get every little bit out of that car you're wanting to hit the you're wanting to hit the highest you know the highest rpm that you can with out wheel hopping okay and if you just slam it into the next gear and you're too high of an rpm your car is going to start wheel hopping and you're going to go boop, 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 boop. so you have to match the rpms in order to to slow it down at a really you know high rpm and and keep it from wheel hopping and the only way that you can match the rpms is to use the clutch so like i'm saying I, i'm not i'm not taking away from your driving style and i'm not taking away from from the way you drive a car i'm just saying that like when you're really really getting after one and you're really trying your best to get every little bit out of that car there may be instances where you actually have to use the clutch and there may be certain corners there may be certain, you know, sweeping corners or it may be a really hard braking corner that you're actually, you know, you're shifting from a, a high, you're shifting into a high RPM because the next gear is, you know, you're wanting to shift as fast as you can, but you're also wanting to keep the car from wheel hopping. And, and you're, you're trying to match the RPMs. And like I said, 
can't match the RPMs if you don't use the clutch. It's all in a in a split of a second. You know, you're you're doing all this in a split of a second. And you may think in your head that that somebody is not capable of shifting that fast and using the clutch. But it's possible. But let's continue. Sure. Um, but the thing that I gonna focus on is obviously holding a smooth wheel but i have such faith that the car is going to just handle well like it's not going to be an issue holding a smooth wheel where i really have to study before i get on the track is so when you go out on to the racetrack you go right up to the wall you get through your gears and you go and you're right next to the wall all the way down the back straight away and through three and four and as you're coming to the dog leg there's a certain spot to come down the hill to the line and then you run your lap down on the line and that spot is important the spot that you turn off the wall and turn down to the line is one of the most important things in qualifying at the super speedway so i'm gonna really need to go look at the racetrack really pick out my marks talk with josh rayum who's a fellow race car driver owns a team talk with everyone that has qualified at talladega and like the whole point I'm trying to make is, is I know she she she's been arguing about this this whole clutch deal for a while now, but the whole point I'm trying to make is is like your driving style that might be how you do it, okay? That might be how you shift shift the gears. It may be a lot simpler for you to do that. If if you're like if you're if you're just fine with getting out there and cruising around and and you know just running just running your race yourself, and you're not really concerned with trying to you know advance your position much then yeah that may be that may just be one extra pedal or one extra step that, that you can just cancel out and you don't have to skip like i can imagine somebody like literally coaching you and telling you hey look don't don't worry about that clutch you don't need it straight cut gears you don't need the clutch you can just shift like that yes yes you can you it is capable of doing that but when you're trying to get every like i said earlier when you're trying to get every little bit out of not only your braking but using the transmission to, to help slow the car down there's it, it's it's a it's an extremely you know delicate like task at hand and it, it's not it's not something that just anybody can do and like i said it may it may be easier for you to do it that way and i'm not I'm not taking away from your driving style. I'm just saying, like, my driving style, it may be a little bit different than yours, but especially when it comes to road course racing. In the past, and really, like, JJ is going to be my teammate. He's going to be a perfect person to be able to go to, talk with, get on pit road, look at those spots, and ask him, like, where he thinks I should turn down from. When I'm on the track, it's going to look different, right? Because I'm going to be I'm gonna be now on the track instead of looking from it from pit road. Where... I'm going to pick out points to make sure I'm making that perfect turn off the wall. And why it's important and why why it matters is because there's a slight hill in the front straightaway. And you want to run down that hill it, because that speed. That speed, if you have questions on why that speed, I'll answer. But that speed. So, um... The most nervous part for me is obviously qualifying because we have to get in the show. And, like, I can't stress this enough. There's only so much everyone can do for qualifying. It's not like it's a short track and you just, like, drive the crap out of the car and get everything you possibly can out of the car and you really wheel it and, like, manhandle it, people say. But I'm a woman. Um, <laughs> so that is just not something that you necessarily get to do actually you just don't that just doesn't happen in super speedway it, it's just wide open and holding a smooth wheel so it's a lot different qualifying at short tracks whoop, is more nerve makes me more nervous because it's really on a lot of it is all on me you know so but because we don't have points, like, I'm going to be nervous. I'm going to be nervous what the motor's got. I'm going to be nervous what the car's got and how the body's hung and, like, how everything is going. And, you know.
know I don't get to practice going through the gears, so I need to really make sure I hit those shift points perfectly. Um, and as an athlete and as someone who gets put in high-pressure situations, this this is advice for everybody because every, every moment you're going through in life, you can apply this to. So, and I started applying it playing Fall Guys, actually. And it was really cool working on it playing Fall Guys. So, it's like, um, you know, everything's always, you're always practicing everything. Like, you know, you're always, I don't know how to explain it other than, like, life, you're always practicing in life. You're practicing to be better. You're practicing, no matter what it is. If it's your job, if it's your routine, if it's being kind, like, or, you know, being more thoughtful, like, you're always practicing to be better, but what I learned as an athlete from a sports psychologist that I've worked with, and that I still work with every once in a while, is that instead of thinking about the outcome that you have absolutely no control over, I have no control over my outcome in qualifying, because there's a lot of factors that go into it that I absolutely have no control over like for all we know the battery could die in pit road and we could just miss qualifying but we could lose oil pressure the motor could blow up we could blow a tire like so many factors go into it like it could just be slow the car could just not have the speed that it needs like there's so many factors that go into it that I have no control over so what I do as an athlete and as a race car driver is I'm going to focus in the moment So when I'm leaving pit road, I'm going to be focusing on how I'm releasing the clutch and how I'm leaving pit road as fast as possible. And once that task is done, you focus on the next next task. And that is getting through the gear smoothly. So once you get through the gear smoothly, now we're on the back straightaway. And that's just like, that's just like right here, right now, when I'm, when I'm hearing this and, and hearing what you're saying and talking about you know wondering what your shift points is and stuff like that i mean to me that's always that's always something you you hear not only do you hear but but you feel you feel in the car too you know once once the car starts kind of running out of power and and you can also hear it it, it, it's just a feeling it's it's like a natural instinct you just you basically just hop and want to go And, and you should know, like, no matter what you're driving or no matter what kind of engine it is or nothing like that, you should just be able to tell when the right time is to shift. But. And into three and four, holding a pretty wheel, and I mean pretty wheel, smooth wheel, not moving it around a lot, straight up against the wall. Getting as much momentum and speed as you can on the high line, and all you can do is be wide open and be smooth on the wheel. Then when I'm coming out of turn four, I'm looking for that spot, that spot that I'm going to turn off the wall and down to the line in so I can roll down that hill. That's that's the magic spot right there. That's wherever that is. I need to go find that. If there's no practice, I'm going to go look for it, like I said, when I'm on pit road and in infield. And after you do that, now, now what you do is now you really focus on is staying wide open, which is easy. You just hold it wide open. That part's easy. The next hard part is going to be having a smooth wheel. You don't want to turn the wheel a lot. So I'm doing that for a whole lap. Um, so that's so in conclusion, when you're put in situations that you have a big portion of it where it's completely out of your control, all you can do is focus on the task at hand, the task in front of you, and do it to the best ability you can. And that's all you can do. So that's what I'm going to do in qualifying. Now if it rains, we're freaking screwed. And I'm going to be saying, Merkity Prit! Merkity 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 Prit! <laughs> um, but I'm going to do a YouTube series. I'm going to start filming either tonight or tomorrow morning. I'm going to do like a Talladega episode one, a Talladega episode two, and a Talladega episode three. And one is going to be, you know, getting to Talladega, preparing for it, like talking about the nerves, talking about everything. Then Talladega episode two 
We're going to eat the whole qualifying day. Talladega episode three is obviously going to be race day. And And let let me just be clear on on the whole concept behind everything that I've been seeing up until this point is that most of this is based off of, you know, hearsay. Most of this is based off of year. And when when you hear this or you hear that or you hear a bunch of different, you know, a bunch of different things that you really have no no understanding of. And see, that's that's the whole concept with just what you said, you know, with things that are in your control versus things that are out of your control. That that's understandable, but when when something may be out of my control, but it's in your control, then it then it then it's no longer, you know what I mean? It's no longer something that's out of my control because it doesn't have to be out of my control. Like like when I if if I hear you say this or I hear you say that, or I hear you talk, you know talk about this or talk about that or or somebody mentioned something that that is extremely vague you know not not vaguely but extremely like very very close to the same thing then you're sitting there constantly like you're, you're, you're wondering like hang on wait a minute not only does how does this person know that but two why is it so you know why why does this feel so like why does it feel familiar? Why does it feel like hitting so close to home? Everything that goes along with it. Um, not a lot of you, but some of you have commented, and maybe none of you in here, but like you're like, there's no race footage, blah, 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 blah. It's just me vlogging, and I'm in the freaking race car. So I can't like th- film the race footage, and you can't put GoPros in the car. NASCAR doesn't allow that, that's illegal. So, like, there's only so much I can do with race footage. So, when you go and watch my vlogs, they are all me. I do it all by myself. I film it all by myself. I, I mean, I have some of my family there at the track that helped me and get some footage as well. Like, my Auntie Sue really helps and Derek helps. But, like, for the most part, it's truly just a vlog. And you're getting, like, behind the scenes. The race is on TV. And I don't have the equipment and the money to fund getting footage of my race. I just, it's not possible right now. I don't have that funding. You know, we. Well, you could always, you know, find you somebody that, that, that would do it for free or, or would do it just out of the kindness of their heart, you know. But that's besides the point. That's that's somebody that, that is strongly, you know, uh, strongly in your circle or strongly, you know, We barely have the funding to do races. So, like, we're doing the best we can. And I really want you guys to understand, like, the vlogs I'm putting together are vlogs that I really enjoy watching. I really enjoy watching a lot of these different females. And the way one girl's name is, like, Maya Fam or Maya Fam, M-A-I, C-H-A-M-M-Y, I believe, something like that. Um, She lives in New York. And her vlog style, it really makes me happy. It really motivates me. And I've taken a liking to her style of video, and I've been trying to do more of that style of vlogging. And there's a few other people. I I also watch Lauren Gadolja, Gadol, I don't know how to say her last name, but Lauren, she is the queen of 12 through 30. It's an exercise that I do that has saved my freaking life for keeping me in shape for racing, because racing is a freaking sport, and you have to be... In shape, I mean, it is proven that there are guys not in shape that do race and do amazing jobs. So. Yeah, just like, just like, oh, just like, oh, Jimmy Spencer, you know what I mean? No, no offense to Jimmy Spencer, but hey, that guy's actually won a cup race or well, it was actually Winston Cup back then, but he actually won a race, you know what I mean? And, and no, like I said, no offense to Jimmy Spencer, but you know what I mean? And, and there's been there's been their other few shares of of drivers out there that may not technically be you know in in top physical form, but you know they they can still get the job done. Technically, you don't have to be like crazy in shape, but it is physically demanding to race a car. And the more shape you are in, the easier it is to keep a clear mind towards the car. Um. 
And 12 through 30 is a workout I do that this girl invented. Her name's Lauren, and I love her YouTube videos. And they're very, like, personal and very blog, like, bloggy. They're not, like, simonat, I don't know how to say it. They're not, like, these big productions put together. And so, but 12 through 30 is you put the treadmill at, at the incline of 12. You walk at the speed of three for 30 minutes. And um, with having a bunch of different autoimmune diseases and not knowing when I'm going to have the strength to work out, it's something that I really look forward to trying to do and accomplish every single day because it keeps me in shape. It keeps my cardio up. And and it's like, don't don't get me wrong. Like if 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 like like me personally, if I was getting to do, you know, if I was getting to do the things that you get to do and if I was getting out and getting to get out there and, and race and, and live my dream and, and, you know, really, really focus on racing and stuff like that. Yeah. I totally agree with you on that. Like I, I definitely would put in the time and put in the effort to, to make sure I'm in top physical form to be able to go out there and perform. But not only that, you also do want to, you know, you do also want to, you know, you want to keep your figure, you know what I mean? You want to be that, 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 that poster girl, you know what I mean? And, and that, that poster driver, <clears throat> gosh, my, my, I'm sorry, my, my throat's dry. I need to go get something to drink. Um, I enjoy being able to accomplish that every day, or at least try to do it every day. And it's something that is low impact on my knees, my ankles, my joints. Um, so if you are scared to like work out or, you need low impact workout. The treadmill at an incline, I do it at 12, which is very high, but you can start at a lower incline, you can start at a lower speed, and you don't have to go for 30 minutes, but try to work yourself up to being able to do the treadmill at the incline of 12, speed of 3, for 30 minutes. Okay, that's, that's, I, I just wanted to do kind of like a little review on this, and uh, you know what I mean? I, I was sitting here watching it on the, on on our Twitch or whatever, but I just wanted to do like a little quick review and kind of like a little quick, you know, comparison and contrast and and stuff like that. And I don't mean to be, you know, all in your stuff or anything like that. I just I, I'm I'm a really avid you know race car fan or whatever you want to call it. I, I've always considered myself a always consider myself a driver or capable of doing it myself. But I, I feel like everybody that Everybody that does it for a profession, you know, is somewhat of a fan themselves. So, yeah, like I, you know, I was just trying to compare and contrast and kind of get both perspectives and get get to understand to like where where both sides come from. And I'm not taking away from anything that you do or any you know any particular way that you accomplish what you're doing. I'm just saying that's that's just my preference. You know what I mean? And I wish to God that I could sit here and say, hey, look. I know exactly what you're talking about and I know I know I know what you're saying. But I've not, you know, I've not accomplished that yet. I'm not sitting here giving up and just completely just throwing in the towel and just being like, Well, it's all over, I'm done with. I mean yeah, no, I would never do that. I, I'll be fifty years old and, and still, you know, hoping and dreaming that, that I can go racing one day, no matter no matter what it is. No matter if it's in a in a top tier series or if it's, you know, some little, you know, blate model over here on the side. You know what I mean? No matter, no matter what it is, I, I'm going to always continue to strive and, and you know, want to do and, and just want to race. But this video has probably done gotten way too long and stuff, so I'm just going to cut it off here and stuff like that. But like I said, I don't, I don't mean to be so hard and so, you know, overly, like, like you may think I'm overly aggressive. You may even think I'm mean. And, and some of the things I'm, I say on the internet is not vindicative of me as an actual person. It's just the internet. You know what I mean? That's just, that's just how the internet is. The, the internet is like a wild and crazy place and, and people are, you know, whatever you want to call them, trolls or, or, you know, they, they laugh, they cut up, they smile, they joke, they say stuff that they don't really mean or, or you know, stuff that they wouldn't really say in, in real life. And, and, People, people are like that, and and, I, and I'm sure you're even like that too. I mean, like right now, you're sitting there at home, you know, streaming your stream. You're comfortable. You're in your zone. You're in your little, you know, 
your little bubble, you're going to say and do a lot of things that you wouldn't necessarily say or do like like out here in the real world. You know what I mean? It's it, it's just that's just how people are. People get in their comfort zone, and that's what that's like. Even me myself, you know what I mean? I get in my comfort zone, and and but I try my best not to say anything you know, on the internet that I wouldn't say in person or I wouldn't say say directly to a person, you know what I mean? And when you're going back and forth and back and forth and it's like it's more of a competition of of who is popular or who is funny or, or who is more important, then it's just like, man, that's just way too much, you know, nonsense to have to deal with. That's way too much stuff to have to, you know, worry about. And it... It, it, it's it's sad that things can't just be a lot more simpler and it can't just be a lot more, you know, just simplified. I've always said the phrase, simplicity is the best medicine. And when you make something as simple as you can make it, it's going to work. It's going to work out better for you in the end with everything you do. Remember, simplicity is the best medicine. But I enjoy your streams. I enjoy, you know, getting on there and racing with you and stuff like that. Whether that ever happens again or whether that ever continues, I totally get it. I totally understand. You know, I, I, I get your perspective. I, I wish to gosh that you didn't, you know, in my opinion, kind of have like a a really stern and, and you know, really f like one track kind of mentality. But that just may be, that may be who you are. You know what I mean? You may You may just... Just have a one kind of, no offense, but like kind of like a one track mind, and you may have it, st you know, st instilled into your head that this is the way it has to be. But you know what I mean? I, I, I'm not afraid. You know, I'm not afraid to admit when I make mistakes, and I'm not afraid to admit that I ain't perfect. And I, you know, I, like I said, I'm so sorry. Like if I've if I've been hard on you and I've said, you know, this and that and it may come off as mean, it's really hard to to know what you're, you know, what a person means while you're reading a message. Like I, I could be over here laughing, you know, laugh, laughing my bottom off and still be sitting over here, you know, and you thinking that I'm over here being serious. That's that's where it, it becomes an issue because you, you don't really know what that person means or how they're trying to come off. And really you just like, you know, me me as a person, I just like I like testing people. I like I like putting them in stressful situations. I like putting them through the rings and, and, and seeing if they're gonna come out on top or if they're gonna come out or if they're gonna fold. And I know that that may be too much for you to handle. I totally get it, I understand, but like I said, I, I'm not afraid to admit when I make mistakes. I hope you ain't either. And anybody watching this, I hope you have a good day. I hope you enjoy watching Natalie. I hope everything is, you know, I hope you continue to support her. I, I've always supported her. I've always liked her. I've always, you know, always enjoyed watching, you know, watching what she's got going on and stuff like that. It's never nothing over the top. It's never no kind of big, huge, massive deal, but... Just really simple things, you know, the most simple things in the world. Sometimes it's the little things in the world that really mean the most to people. And it's just a shame, you know, it's a shame when you when you don't really know what a person means from a comment on this or that. But I'm not I'm not sitting here trying to, you know, get famous off your name. I'm not trying to clout chase. I'm not doing none of that. I don't I don't need none of that. But I'm just going to end it right there. And like I said, hope you have a good day. Anybody else watching this, enjoy it, uh, dislike it, whichever one you want to do. I don't really care. But have a good day. That's all that matters. Don't have a good day. Have a great day.